one question I get asked a lot. A cameraman's laughing, but it has nothing to do with my head. The question is, what car should I buy? And honestly, there are so many options based on how much you want to spend. And that's my problem. There's no real no-brainer. Or is there? That's the new Hyundai i20. I'm Ronak, this is Powerdrift, and today we're here to answer one very simple question. Is the new i20 a no-brainer? It is certainly off to a great start. It looks great to me. While its rivals seem hell-bent on polarizing opinions, the new i20 will fit right into our sensibilities. Rounded edges, flowing lines and symmetry is everywhere and I just love the way the left tail lamp almost forms a roof for the fuel filler cap. Neat touches like that extend to the cabin as well. I love the way these vents look like they're extending all the way across the width of the cabin. And then there's this massive 10.25 inch touchscreen. There's plenty of features and plenty of connectivity. And as for this all digital instrument cluster, I'm not so convinced. It looks great, shows you a lot of information, but at the end of the day, am I the only one who misses analog dials? Let me know in the comments what you think, obviously. And then there's a nice, meaty, chunky steering wheel to hold. Seats are really comfortable. And generally, the switch gear is plenty premium. The biggest change, however, is to the dimensions. The new i20 is 10mm longer, 41mm wider and has a wheelbase that's 10mm more than the previous i20. And the direct benefit of that comes right here at the back. Now the front seat is set to my driving position and I'm just a touch under 6 feet tall. And as you can see, there's plenty of legroom, more than enough headroom and honestly the only place I can complain is there should have been a little bit more thigh support. But other than that, it's all peachy. Just one thing, don't try to fit three people side by side because you're not going to be able to reach that little charging port right down there. And as for the engines, there's three options. The 1 litre turbo that's getting increasingly popular, a 1.2 petrol and a 1.5 diesel. As for the gearboxes, there's five options including a DCT and an IMT. Hyundai is not leaving anything out clearly. In the case of the new i20, a lot of very small details have come together to make a very complete car. There's not much that's missing. Now, as to the answer to my question, is it a no-brainer? The only thing stopping me from saying yes it is, is the fact that we haven't driven it yet and that'll be very soon. In the meanwhile, let us know what you think in the comments and whether this will make sense as your next purchase. And if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, will you? Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.